31, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, in him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. There we go. Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Zahar. I like your hair, man. Yeah, you. you better stop, stop uh, outsourcing my water. I'm out. I got some water. Then who just brought me water? Mm -hmm. Why you bring me water if he bring me water? Yeah. All right, well, bring me both water. We're going to drink tonight. And then after that, uh, your mom said, bring her some pizza. When the pizza get here, your mom said, bring it. Um, yes. Yeah, we're going to start putting some money on my man Tab. Where we at? Every time we uh, uh, daddy, baby. Mm, it's a rough yeah, start just, today. I think we finished Leviticus. Oh, no, we're in the last chapter of Leviticus. Oh, yeah, we're not going to do Leviticus 27, though. So let's start with Numbers. This is Numbers. Numbers chapter 1, verse 1. Don't walk away from the fire. In Numbers chapter 1, verse 1. You know, when you first start reading, this might seem like the most boringest thing you ever read, but once you get into the scriptures and understand why all of this stuff is being done, it is an amazing thing. As long as you see the picture, you know what I'm saying? As long as the picture come together for you, you know what I'm saying? We're going to actually show some pictures, so, you know what I'm saying? It might be a little easier. Just to know that everybody we count, got it. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. Yahuwah spoke, spoke unto Moses, and there is in the wilderness where? Of Sinai. So when, when did we first learn about Sinai? Exodus. Exodus, right? So in Exodus, you know what I'm saying, we was at Sinai. And then now in the beginning of the number. Was it three months after we left out of there? The second month. Second month? Yeah, second month we was in there. Uh, we, we made it to Sinai a month from when we left, you know what I'm saying, Egypt. And then um, now a year later, well, we're about to see. Keep going. In the tabernacle con congregation on the first on the first, <laughs> on the first, right, <laughs> on the first day of the second month, mm -hmm. in the second year after right. they were come out of the land of Egypt. So now this is a year from the time that we came out, a year and one month from the time that we came out of Egypt initially, right? How long is this from the time that the tabernacle was set up? In the second year Let's after they go. were come up out of the land of Egypt. Let's see. Grab uh, Exodus chapter forty verse. Mm, maybe verse like seven. Is this too loud? Uh, maybe a little bit. You want to go watch TV? Yeah. Okay. Let me restart. Uh, 40. Okay, well, and you ahead. shall set a laver between the tent of the congregation and altar and put water. I'm in. looking for where it show you the the month and the year. It should be somewhere. If that was verse seven, maybe a little further down. No, nah, maybe a little further up. The maybe first day of the first month shall you set up the tabernacle and the tent of the congregation. Keep going. And you shall put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. Mm -hmm. and you should bring in a table and the other the in order. The things that are to be set in order upon it, and you shall bring it in the candlestick, and light the lamps thereof. Mm -hmm. You shall set the altar 
of gold for the end. Maybe verse 15, somewhere around there. Mm. And it came to pass in the first month. In so the hold second. on, here it is. It and it came to pass when? In the first month. In the first month. In the second year. In the second year. On the first day of the month. On the first day of the month. That the tabernacle was reared up. So now the tabernacle was reared up a year from when we came out of Egypt. One, one full year from when we came out of Egypt, the tabernacle was reared up. So we set up the tabernacle a full year from there. So in the first month, on the first day, of the, of, the, of the first month, first day of the first, I mean, of the second year, right? Then, if we go back to Numbers, where did it put us? Uh, it spoke to Moses in, Moses in the wilderness of the Sinai and the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month in the second year after they were come up out of the land of Egypt. So how far is that apart from when we reared up the tabernacle? Like a day later. <clears throat> Same day, maybe. It's a month later. <clears throat> oh, yeah, second month. Sorry, second month. Right? <clears throat> so it's one month later, we end up um, you know, where we are right now in numbers. So literally, remember, we stopped in Exodus, then we had Leviticus. Leviticus. So literally, everything we read in Leviticus, everything, only a month passed. Leviticus, wasn't that when he was like uh, an amount for all that time? 40 days, 40 nights, he was getting all that? that all the information that he got in Leviticus would have came when he was up there in the mount, mm -hmm. Mount Sinai, right? So we put the tabernacle together, and then he came down, he gave us all the game. He gave us all the information. This is everything I learned. This is how things got to run. And we get that in Leviticus, right? So now we in Numbers. Now we're getting back to some of the narratives. But Numbers starts off with counting. That's why they call it Numbers, right? So it starts off with some counting. <coughs> so let's learn about it. This is Numbers chapter 1. What verse? 1. This is Numbers chapter 1, verse 1. And the Lord spake to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation. On the first day of the second month, the I'm gonna put the year, timeline on the screen. After they were come out of the matter of fact, I messed up. I was supposed to, before we started, we were supposed to talk about the date. What is TJ doing? Making out for a new one. I told you I was gonna try to keep the date. So let's see if we can put it up there. Hey kids, I need y'all to be quiet. So now let's look at the let's look at the uh, at the top here. This puts on us today, you know what I'm saying, earlier in the daytime, we would have been, uh, we would have been the eighth, eighth day of Abib. This is the first month uh, of the Hebrew year, and we would have been on the eighth day. We're in the second week, right? If we would have been in the eighth day. Now, you know what I'm saying, this is the evening of the, uh, of the ninth day, right? So next week, you know what I'm saying, a week from now, it's going to put us on unleavened bread, you know what I'm saying, Passover. Mm -hmm. And all that, so we're going to celebrate that Thursday night. We're going to have Passover, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll have a Bible study during the day, Unleavened Bread. And then our regular Sabbath night uh, Bible study on Friday, that Friday night. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to see a whole lot of each other, a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, we'll but, be Thursday. We'll be here Thursday evening. All right. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's that. They keep going. Let's, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to switch the screen so they can see the timeline of where we are. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Did you uh, write down uh, the number of every tribe? Or did you do? Mm hmm Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. <clears throat> From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, you and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you, there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. Mm -hmm. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you, of the tribe of Reuben, Elizer, the son of Shedar, mm -hmm. of Simeon, Shel Shelum Shelumiel, the son of Zerushaddai, mm -hmm. of Judah, Nashon, the son of Amenadad, mm -hmm. of Issachar, Nathaniel, son of Zuar, mm -hmm. of Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helon, of the children of Joseph, Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amalhud, and Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer, <clears throat> of Benjamin, Abidon, the son of Gideonai, of Dan, Ahazer, the son of Amishadai, of Asher, Pegiel, the son of Okran, of Gad, Eli Eliasaph, the son of Deuel, mm -hmm. of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enon, 
These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. All right? So it just led us, it just talked to, talked to us, the leaders of each of the tribes. So remember, the tribes, if we go back to, to when we were in Egypt, the tribes come from Egypt. Remember, all the brothers came to Joseph. Joseph was running the show. All the brothers came to Joseph. These are the same brothers that sold Joseph into, into captivity, right? So then Joseph invites his brothers back in. Pops dies. But before Pops dies, he gave a blessing to all his sons, or gave some words at least to all his sons, right? So in giving those words to his sons, he put a, a, a blessing or a curse on them, right? What those things end up doing it, is, it ended up separating them into separate tribes. So then people, they took from their lineage, and from that point on, they tied themselves back to that father, that great-grandfather, that great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. However they do, they tie it back. So the same way that we would have last names, and my last name is Harris, right? Everybody got different last names. That's how this worked. Yo, the equivalent of your last name would have been Issachar, if you was from the tribe of Issachar, and that lets everybody know that I'm of the family of Issachar. I'm of the tribe of Issachar, right? So everything was broken up into 12 tribes, right? Technically 13, right, if you include the Levites, right? But everything was broken up, excuse me, into those, into, into those tribes. So then time goes on, the fathers die, but now you have leaders of each of the tribes, the wisest man, the strongest man, the most notable man, right? He becomes the leader of each of these tribes. So the book goes through and first identifies the leader, the, repre the, the person who represents each of the, each of the, uh, each of the tribes, right? Keep going. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, uh -huh. <clears throat> and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, mm -hmm. and they declared their pedigrees after their families. Right? They, they <clears throat> declared their pedigree after their family. So then, in front of all the people, they had to prove it. They had to show, nah, so his daddy is this person, he daddy is that, just to show that, nah, he really about this tribe, he's able to represent you. Right? This whole show that we got going on right here, all this is going to happen again when we get taken out of here, right? Somebody is going to show our pedigree to let us know where we come from. Esri. Right now, we don't know. You want to get down? Right now, we don't know where we come from. Right now, we just know, well, we Hebrews, right? We Hebrews, why? Because we descend from slavery in America, and we know the prophecy talks about that. That's our connection to it, right? We don't necessarily know what tribe we're from, though. Right? It's not necessarily enough information there for us to know what tribe we're from. You okay, baby girl? Let's go to, uh, or keep going, actually. <clears throat> After their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, by their poles. Mm -hmm. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according mm -hmm. to the number of their names, by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upwards, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even the tribe of Reuben, were 40 and 6,500. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them according to their number of names, their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go to war. Those that were numbered of them, even the tribe of Simeon, were 50 and 9,300. Right? Now jump over to, to um, chapter, we're on what, chapter 1 right now? Mm, yeah. Jump over to chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 1. And the Lord spake to Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. So the ensign, think of ensign as just being like, like a, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like some type of representation. You know what I'm saying, like a sign. 
right? So it'd be in a sign or like a flag, you know what I'm saying, for each, each tribe. So every tribe has its own sign or fan. I'm sorry, sign or a flag. Baby girl. Baby girl. Mel, can you do me a favor? Can you take her in there to Tasha? Thank you. Um, so let's keep going. Watch this. Go in there with your mom, baby girl. What's wrong? Nothing. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. That's right. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. Uh huh. And on the east side toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And Nashon, the son of Amenadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. Uh huh. And his hosts. And those that were numbered of them were three score and fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch Hold next to quiet. him, boys! All y'all be quiet. Tell TJ to come over here. Teach! Teach, up here. Come up here. <clears throat> And those that pitched next to unto him, wait, my bad. And his host and those that were numbered of them were three score and 14,000 and 600. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar. And Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were 50 and 4,400. Mm hmm. Then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab, the son of Helon, shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. Mm -hmm. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand four hundred. Mm -hmm. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand and four score thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. Right. He shall first set forth. So now, you have, you have, not only do you have tribes, but you also have camps. So then... Each tribe has to be within a camp, and then there's a leader within each camp, a leading tribe within each camp. So the way it will have it line up is that the camp of Judah is always going to be to the east, right? So you had a camp of Judah to the east. Inside the camp of Judah, you got Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Then you have the camp of uh, Ephraim that's behind. Right? That's Benjamin, Benjamin, Manasseh, and Ephraim. Then the camp of Reuben is going to be in the south. That's Gad, Simeon, and Reuben. And then the camp of Dan up top, which is in the north, that's Naphtali, Asher, and Dan. Right? And so you can see, you can see like a, you know, a rough estimate of the numbers um, of the people that's in there. And then in the middle, you see the, that's where the Levites are. So let's talk a little bit about the Levites. Jump, uh, over to Numbers chapter 3. Where are your glasses at, boy? They broke. <laughs> Numbers what? They broke here. Numbers chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 1. So this is how they sat when they came out of Egypt. And remember, we sat, uh, sat in our camps. Everybody pitched their tent. This is how they sat, every tribe. All right, right in the middle, that's a tabernacle. All right, so that's our tabernacle. That's how the tabernacle was set forth. And then if you look on the compass, that's north, that's south, that's west, and that's east. So the tabernacle will be facing, you know what I'm saying, facing to the east, right? And you would have Judah that's right there in the front. So the front is where Judah is right here. And you have Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun would all be mixed up in the one camp, right? Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. and then he got the, the camp is Ephraim, but Benjamin is in that camp. And you'll see right now, you kind of look at it as just shapes, but in actuality, those will be a whole bunch of little tents and little houses, you know what I'm saying, little temporary houses for people to live in. And so just think of it as a big old camp, a huge campsite with all these thousands and thousands of people 
And that's just the men, right? The, the numbers that we have up there is just the men yeah, that's ready for war. war. Yeah. So you got to be 20 or above, everybody there. That's what that county is. But then on top of that, you got women and then you got children. So this is, this is at least a million people out there, probably more, that, that's sitting out there in camps. So this is a huge, huge, huge campsite. You ever, who, you know what I'm saying? You ever like looked on TV and saw like a concert or whatever, there's a whole bunch of people. Like it's like that times three or four, right? Maybe even more than that. Yeah. Anybody that saw a decent war movie and saw like a big old army like marching. Mm. Yeah, that's what it looked like. And that's what we were trying to prepare ourselves for, for war. So that's why the Most High God surrounded us. At first he counted all the men of war, then he surrounded us with those people because that's what we're preparing ourselves for. Mm. You got the priest right, front row seat, priest right here, right next to the tabernacle. Best seat in the house. So let's keep going. This is uh, Numbers chapter 3, verse 1. What was you saying? We're about to talk about them right now. The Levites are here. This is the priests, and these are the Levites that help them. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and these are the names of the sons of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron. These priests, which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. Mm -hmm. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron, the priest, that they may minister unto him. Right? So he told them to bring the tribe of Levi near. Because you notice, out of all the counting that we did, the Levites weren't counted. Right? There's another tribe, the Levites. So they weren't counted. So now we're about to count the Levites. But see how it's a little different. When we counted the rest of the tribes, we started at what age? 20 and older. 20 and older we started. Right? Let's see how it works for the Levites. And they shall keep his charge, the charge of the whole congregation, before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation in the charge of the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. <clears throat> right? So now the sons of Aaron, which are Levites also, all the other Levites that are not sons of Aaron were given to the sons of Aaron. In other words, the sons of Aaron could rule over them, right? They were servants to the sons of Aaron. So the sons of Aaron are what? What position does the sons of Aaron hold? Hmm? The Levites are servants to the sons of Aaron, but what position do the sons of Aaron hold? Hmm? The priest, Take right? Take off your mouth. So they're the priests. So now the priests are served by the Levites, right? So now the Most High God is about to talk about what the service is. Let's, let's look into it. And thou shalt anoint, appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And when Lord, it says stranger, it's not talking about just a Gentile. Talk it's about talking about anybody that. who's not. Anybody that's not a Levite or a priest. If you're not a Levite, you come near. And you know what I'm saying? You didn't have that job for you. You come near, you shall be put to death. That's what the book says. That ain't me. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, <clears throat> And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that opens the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. Because all their firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hollowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mm -hmm. Mine they shall be. I am Yahuwah. <clears throat> so now, originally, when we came out of Egypt, the Most High God smote all of, he, he killed all of the firstborn children, our firstborn, first, the, all of the firstborn out of Egypt, right? So if you were the firstborn, you died in Egypt. So then... Anybody who put the blood of a lamb over their door, right, those houses were passed over and their firstborns were not killed, right? That's why we celebrate Passover. That's what we're about to celebrate next week, right? We're celebrating the fact that
the Most High God intended to kill the firstborn child of everybody in Egypt, but those who have faith and put the blood of the lamb on top of their door, their house was passed over, right? So that's why we eat lamb, we roast the lamb, and we eat lamb, <clears throat> right? So what the Most High God is saying now is there's a law after that to say, if any of the firstborn of Israel have to be dedicated to God, right? So your firstborn child in Israel have to be dedicated to God. Up to this point, those, the firstborns out of Israel, were the ones that were servicing the, uh, the uh, sons of Aaron. Those are the ones that were servicing um, uh, Moses and everything up to this point. They were playing the role kind of what we'll see the Levites play going forward, right? So the Malcolm, now what the Most High God is saying, I don't want the firstborn anymore. Instead of the firstborn, I'm going to take the Levites. And the Levites will perpetually be the servants of the sons of Aaron, right? Keep going. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi after the house of their fathers by their families. Every male, every male from a month old and upward shall thou number them. Okay. <clears throat> And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord as he was commanded. Mm -hmm. and these were the sons of Levi by their names. Okay. Gershon and Kohath and Merari. So hold on. Every, every male that's what? One month and older. So all you had to do was be a baby. Right? If you was a baby, you made it a month, you were part of this count. Right? So let's take a look at it. And these were the sons of Levi by their names. Gershon and Kohath and Merari. Right? So you see... Those are the three groups that's up there. Merari, Gershon, and Koath. Those are the three groups. Moses and Aaron come from the Kohathites. Right? That's where they come from. But they get to get their own separate group. Right? The sons of Aaron. All right? And Moses is along with that group. Keep going. And these are the names of the of their sons of Gershon by their families, Libni and Shimei, the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram and Ezihar, Hebron and Uziel, mm -hmm. and the sons of Merari by their families, Ma Mahalai and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites according to the house of their fathers. Mm -hmm. Of Gershon was the family of the Libnites and the family of the Shemite, Shemites. These are the families of the Gershonites. Mm -hmm. Those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were 7,500. Mm -hmm. The families of the Gershon, Gershonites shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward. And the chief of the house of the father of the Gershonites shall be Eliasaph, the son of Lael. Mm -hmm. And the charge of the sons of Gershon in the, ta in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent the covering thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Right? So now it's telling you what the Gershonites' job was. Right? They shall, their service, right, their job is the tabernacle. Right? Which means they have to pick up the tent. So remember, this is a, this is a big tent. The tabernacle is just a big tent. Right? With a whole lot of stuff inside of it. At any point, when the Most High God tells us to move, we got to break that whole thing down. Everybody got to break down their camp. They got to make it, and then we got to start walking, right? A whole bunch of people, everybody got to move, right? So the tent is the same way. The tabernacle is a big tent. What their job is, is they take the coverings of the tent, and what else? And Is it the tabernacle? What else? And the, son, the charge of the sons of Gershon is the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent. The covering thereof and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Right? So that's their piece of it. They take the covering. So all the, all the you, you'd have to put uh, goats, you know what I'm saying, goat skin over it because goat skin is heavy. So you put this goat skin over it, and that's what keep the, the tabernacle down. You put the stakes and all that stuff. So then after everything is pulled out and the stakes, they take it, you know what I'm saying, and they wrap it all up, you know what I'm saying, and they carry it on. And they got to carry it when they walk. That's their job. If anybody else try to do their job, guess what happened? X. They get put to death. If anybody else be like, oh, no, let me help you out with that. They not a Gershonite. They not a Levite and they not a Gershonite, right? They try to get it. No, let me help you with that. No, you about to drop it. You get put to death. That's only they job. That's, that's only them, nobody else. They get to take it, right? This is the order. Y'all have to know God, right? 
A lot of people, a lot of people out here, well, you know, I love God. I know God. These people don't know who God is because this is God. He's telling you who he is. He's specific. He wants order. This group does this. It don't care about who you want to be. It don't care about who you think you are. It don't think you, it, he don't care about none of your accomplishments. The only thing he care about is did you come from the family I told you to come from? That's why it's crazy people just out here and they acting like they feel like just because I feel like I want to be a boy or want to be a girl, I can be a boy or be a girl. And they think God care about that. Think God care about, well, no, I was born this way and I just feel like, oh, I'm like, God don't care nothing about how he made you. The man made you and told you still do what I say. <clears throat> now you got these people all messed up. God darn Grown men acting like they women winning all the records in the women's uh, competitions. Crazy. He that man that he gonna he gonna win the, the, swimming, the swimming he gonna, yeah he gonna win all he gonna break all the women records. This a dude though. Like, I was watching the Joe Button podcast. They like oh, that. What y'all get? Y'all should live with it now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he like I want him to run him up. <laughs> he is like he is like imagine John ja Morant saying that he a woman now and then going to the WWNBA. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I attend every game. <laughs> These people are crazy, though. Because you can't do that. Men is built different. I saw a meme on, uh, you know what I'm saying, online. That thing said, that thing said, you know what I'm saying, a trans woman is a woman. Then it said, a thousand years later, this is a male skeleton. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, once your, look, you know how your flesh, we talked about the flesh and how the resurrection is going to happen, right? How the flesh start to rot away, and the only thing you got left is what? Bone. Just a bone, right? Big old ball of your bones, right? <clears throat> At the end of the day, when you strip away everything else from a person, your bones will tell you who you are. It'll tell you that you're a man or a female. Females have different bone structure than males. That's this new stuff that they try to tell you. Gender is just... Gender is just this. You can be whatever gender you want. That's not true. You can tell yourself whatever you want. You can do whatever you want to do. Everybody can live however they choose to live and deal with the consequences of it, right? That's a fact. They're not lying when they say that. But you can't lie to yourself about what you are. You, want to, you, you a man and you want to be a girl? Then just say, I'm truly a man, but I like pretending to be a girl. I don't like my reality. I don't like that. I like pretending. I know it's different. I know it's not natural, but this is what I want to do, and I'll take all the consequences that come with it. Stand in your foolishness. Why you guys here and try to make us believe what you is? No, dummy, we know you a darn man. You ought to be ashamed of yourself swimming faster than all these women. You better get dusted if you swim out there with the men. Like you wouldn't even be able to compete if you were swimming with men. So you would rather act like a darn girl just to feel like you want some. These people are sick. Just darn sick and y'all let them get away with it. Crazy. Women should be outraged. They should be outraged. They, they should, are. They should be outraged. It's a backfire and they say, and if some, some of the, the problem is some of the same people that support this foolishness. When they start seeing the consequences, people don't think past the emotional moment. Somebody jump up and be like, well, I just feel like, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? This is how I felt. I walked on my tippy toes as a young boy and, you know what I'm saying? I just felt like maybe I was a girl. And instead of correcting that and looking at him, be like, no, no, my son. I know how you felt. I know you always felt like you wanted to play with Barbies. You want to do that. And I never said nothing to you as a parent. Not to be ashamed of myself if I'm a parent who do that. Right. But at some point you stop your kid and you say, you know what? This is who you are. Right. How you feel is not who you are. Whoever been mad before. Is that who you are? After you get done getting mad, how you feel? Bad. You'd be like, dang it, now I'm sad that I was mad. Whoever been sad before? Is that who you are? After you done getting sad, how do you feel? That wasn't so bad. Ah, I'm over it now. <clears throat> Start getting happy, don't you? Whoever been happy before? Is that who you are? After you get happy, how do you feel? You move on to the next emotion after happiness. Somebody make you mad again. Something make you sad again. You get embarrassed about something. 
All those are feelings. None of them, not even happy, is who you are. How you feel does not determine who you are. What determines who you are? Your actions. The choices that you make. That's it. If you live based off of your feelings, then you become the choices that your feelings cause you to make. But you're not your feelings. Just because you feel a certain way in the moment, you feel sad, you feel happy, you feel like a girl, you feel like a boy. None of that is anything. The only thing is anything is what choices you make. And if you make the right choices, you'll see the kingdom. You make the wrong choices, your butt going to hell. And that's okay if you want to go to hell, right? If you want to go to hell, that's okay for you. But don't lie to yourself about it. That's the only thing. If you want to do whatever you want to do, do not lie to yourself about it. Tell yourself the truth because if you lie to yourself, you remove the opportunity to get back. Right? At least if you tell yourself the truth and you're out here doing foolishness, at least at some point you'll be like, I knew this was foolishness the whole time. Let me go ahead and stop, you know, stop all this foolishness and serve God. At least you got a chance to get back. You get to lie to yourself, you start believing it, then you believe what you're doing is right, and you never even got a chance to get back because you think you ain't going the right path. Just don't lie to yourself. You're not your feelings, you're your decisions. Make the right ones. Keep going, let's see what we got. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the, wait, where was I? My bad. So hold on, we, we ain't gotta keep going through all of it. So you got, uh, jump on down to uh, who's next after uh, Marari is next, right? Mm, let's see. Might be in the next chapter, actually. Yes, and the hanging of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, that's Gershom still. Uh-huh, jump on down to Marari. Okay. I want to get Marari's job. What are they supposed to be doing? Of Marari was the family of the Mahalites, of the family of the Mushites. These are the families of Marari. Mm hmm. What are they supposed to be doing? Let me make sure we ain't skip one. No, I think Koath is next in chapter no. four. Koath was before that. So you skip Koath if we go straight to Marari. Oh, okay. Then go to Koath. I thought Koath right. was last. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. 27. And of Kohath was the family of the Amram, Amramites, and the family of the Ezerites, and the family of the Hebronites, mm -hmm. and the family of the Uzielites. These are the families of the Kohathites. Now, we got Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. But like he was saying, in those families you have clans. Like, I'm from Kohath. But my dad wasn't Amram, it was Izhar, right? So Moses and Aaron's dad was Amram. Their cousins, who came from their uncle, Izhar, that's how they divided their clan. So you got a tribe, but don't be confused when you talk about inside the tribe, because inside the tribe you got different clans with different fathers. It is what they're talking about. <clears throat> These are the families of the Kohathites. And the number of all the males from a month old and upward were 8,600, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So this is what their job was. When they say keeping the charge, they're saying this is what their responsibility was. So they had to keep the charge of the sanctuary. This is the tabernacle. What they do? The families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward, and the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathites shall be Elizaphan, the son of Uziel. And their charge shall be the ark and the table and the candlestick and the altars and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister and the hanging and all the service thereof. So you remember when we were reading <clears throat> Exodus, we showed all the pictures. We showed the pictures of the mercy seat and the candlestick and that table with that, the bread on it and all that. That's all a job, right? When it's time to move, when it's time to break everything down, you got to be like, hold on, hold on. Kohathites, y'all go in first. Kohathites got to get it, take everything out. You remember uh, when they put it together, they had long poles. They call it staves, right? They had these long poles on it because the Kohathites had to get it, pick it up. All right, let's go. And they walk with it. It'd be one person in the front, one person in the back holding it up, and they'd be walking with it, right? Maybe you got one person on the side, one person on the side there, two more on the other side, and then you walk with it. However you do it, it had to be a Kohathite, though, right? If somebody from... Uh, Somebody from, uh, you know what I'm saying, somebody from uh, Dan tried to jump over, like, no, nah, man, let me help you out with that. Now nah, you're about to be put to death, right? 
Because the Most High God don't care what, he don't care how you feel and that you can help. All he care about is, this is what I told you to do and this is how I told you to do it. Do it the way I told you to do it. Sacrifice how you feel, sacrifice what you think, and just do what I tell you to do, period. Because it gives order. And that's all he care about is the order. Right? Keep going. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest shall be chief over the chief of the Levites. Mm -hmm. And he and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Of Merari was the family of the Mahalites, of the family of the Mushi, Mushites. Mm -hmm. These are the families of Merari. Mm -hmm. And those that were numbered of them according to the number of all males from a month old and upward were 6,200. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Merari were Zuriel, the son of Abihelai, mm -hmm. Abihael. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward and under the custody in charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof and the pillars thereof and the sockets thereof and all the vessels thereof and all that serves thereunto. Right. And the pillars of the court round about and their sockets and their pins and their cords. Right. So you see that red area right in the middle? All that red area is the court. That's called the court. That's the outer area. So the border, the edges of that red area would be like a fence. Think of it as kind of like a fence. So now, Mara uh, who are we talking about right now? Marari, Marari right? Yeah. Marari, their job was to take care of that fence. They'd have to pull the fence up, wrap it up, right? Then the other job is to unfasten everything, right? So you had stakes in the ground that you ever, you ever saw a tent? They got to put the stake in the ground. It was kind of like that. It'd be stakes in the ground that hold down the covering of the tent. So now whose job was it to take care of the covering of the tent? Uh, Gershom. The Gershomites, right? So they had to pull up the stakes. It's their job to pull up the stakes and anything that fastens, right? So anything that's holding stuff together, they had to unfasten it, take it apart. Now they can't touch the actual covering, right? That's Gershon's job. The Gershonites got to do that, right? We got to unfasten it. We got to make it loose so that it can be taken up, right? So they go through, they take it up, they get the fence, what else? And the cords. They get the cords, the, everything that's wrapping it, you know what I'm saying? the sockets and their pins. The sockets, everything that's fastened the, together. The pillars of the court. Right, and the pillars of the court. So the pillars of the court is that it's like the fence, you know what I'm saying? So they had to get all the fence, and all they had cables and cords and fastens and sockets and everything to hold everything together. They had to pull all that apart, right? Keep going. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. Right? So Moses and the, and the priests, they encamp in the front. And that would include the priests, their wives, their daughters, their sons, the whole family. All that family, they would be right there in the front. Right? So they have, we, we, we see that this is how the camp would be set up. You know what I'm saying? We kind of just march in this order. Think of east as being the front, right? That's kind of where everything is facing, right? So if we had to go, we load up, and that's how we move. Everybody move at one time, let's go. Let's move together in order. That's what it's all about. If you learn nothing else from what we're reading in our law, learn that the Most High God has a very specific order, and it's detailed. It's not willy-nilly, right? When we kind of think of it just like, you know what I'm saying? You, if you learn the Bible from Christians, it would have you believing that God don't really care how it works as long as it works. Right? That's kind of the attitude that you'll have. Just like, oh, no, it's the grace of God. And you know what? And we all mess up. And we all do it. Oh, God ain't really thinking about that. As long as, you know what? As long as you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. That's what they idea. Just like, oh, you do this one thing and nothing else matters. But just know that that's not the God we serve. The God we serve appreciates <clears throat> order. He sees detail. Things have to work out exactly the way he put it forth. And it's our job to overcome what we think is a challenge to that order. Right? I'm a man. I don't have a wife. Right? Then the order would be you need a wife before you could teach the word or preach the word, lead a congregation rather. Right? You need a wife before you can lead a congregation. Right? That's an order that's set up, not in the Old Testament, not in, not, Moses didn't get that order. That's an order set up from the apostles, 
from the New Testament, from Yahushua, right? So now, just because I feel like, mm, you know what, I think I do really good at leading the congregation, and I really want to do it, and I feel, I just feel like I'm the right person to do it, and I feel like God is calling me to do it. If I don't understand how serious God is with his order, I might just go out there and start a church. But that's not what the books say, and that's not the order he gave us. As a Christian, I might not take that serious because I've never been taught the order of the Most High God. As somebody who's learned in the law, you look at it and you say, oh, if the man say this is how it's supposed to go, then I need to line up. That is what faith is. Even if you look like this could be done a different way, but it's not the way God say, said do it. And since it's not how he said do it, I'm not going to do it because I trust the way that he said do it, even if it feels like that's not the best way to do it. Right? That's what faith is about. And the only way you can start to trust God is knowing how particular he is when it comes to his order. Because now you're going to understand when we get to the New Testament, all this stuff is going to make sense. Everything that feels loose, you can read the New Testament and just read pieces of it, and some of it might feel loose. It only feels loose to the people that don't require the order that the Most High God requires. Once you understand the order, you start to see, like, oh, okay, when Yahushua says such and such, that's really tying into all of this order that's already been laid forth, right? So we'll talk about that. I don't want to move us too far ahead. I want us to understand and live in the moment, right? In the moment, we are in the wilderness. We are Israelites. We learning about who we are, right? And the Most High God is teaching us laws. He's giving us order, right? So in this place, this is our mindset. Let's keep going. And the stranger that comes near shall be put to death. <clears throat> All that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord, Throughout their families, all males from a month old and upward were 20 and 2,000. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. All right, so then we took the firstborn, and basically at this point, we're going to do a big sacrifice to, to redeem the firstborn sons in place of uh, the Levites. Because remember, the Levites are going to take the place of the firstborns. Let's jump over to uh, Numbers chapter 4, verse 1. Numbers chapter 4, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families by the house of their fathers. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, all that entered into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the, of the congregation, this shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of, con of the congregation, about the most holy things. Mm -hmm. And when the camp sets up forward, sets up, sets forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of testimony with it. Uh huh. And shall put thereon the covering of badger skins, mm -hmm. and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, mm -hmm. and shall put in the staves thereof. And upon the table of showbread they shall spread. So notice, y'all paying attention. Who has to do this? Go ahead. Let's start it over. Let's read it again. Watch this. Take the sum of the Kohath sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families by the house of their fathers from 30 years old and upward to uh -huh. 50, even to 50 years old. Uh -huh. All that enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of congregation mm -hmm. about the most holy things. Watch this. And when the camp sets forward. So when the camp <laughs> sets forward, when, so when it's time to move, we're and, talking about the Kohathites right now, but when it's time to move, watch this. Aaron shall come and his Who? sons. Aaron shall come. Aaron shall come and his sons. So now, we just learned about what the job of the Kohathites are. Aaron and, uh, Aaron and Moses come from what family? Or what, what uh, yeah, what, what clan? Kohath. Kohath. Right? So now we're talking about the Kohathites. It's the job of the Kohathites. The job of the Kohathites is what the Most High God said was to move the artifacts that are inside of the tabernacle. Sanctuary. Inside of the sanctuary, right? Ain't that what we read? Yeah. Okay. So that's their job. The Most High God is so particular that the sons of Aaron had to come from the Kohathites because they have to play a part. Who gets to touch and deal with the artifacts? Aaron. Only the sons of Aaron. 
only the priests. <clears throat> right? So for that to be possible, that means you got to come from Korah. Because later, I'm going to tell the Korahite that they got to move it. But watch how deep this is. That only the sons of Aaron, watch this. And Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of testimony with it. So now they got to take the covering veil, right? And they cover the ark of testimony with it. Watch this. They wrap it up. And shall put thereon the covering of badger skins and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue and shall put in the staves thereof. Okay. And so now the sons of Aaron are the ones that put the poles inside of the artifacts, right? So the, the, uh, the mercy seat. The, um, the, tavern, the, the table, the Ark, the Ark of the right? Ark of the Covenant, all those. We putting the poles in there, the sons of Aaron are. Yeah, because like, it's low-key connected to the most holy place. And, you know, yep. He's the only person that go in there anyway, so nobody else can move it. Keep going. And shall put thereon the covering of badger skins, and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof. And upon the table of showbread, they shall spread a cloth of blue and put thereon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover it withal. Mm -hmm. And the continual bread shall be thereon. And they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet and cover the same with a covering of badger skins and shall put in the staves thereof. Mm -hmm. and they shall take a cloth of blue and cover the candlestick of the light and his lamps and his tongs and his snuffled it, snuff dishes and all the oil vessels there are, there are within their minister unto it, mm -hmm. where, where, wherewith they minister unto it. Mm -hmm. And they shall put it in all the vessels thereof within the covering of badger skins and shall put it upon a bar. Mm -hmm. And upon the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue and cover it with a co uh, covering of badger skins and shall put to the staves thereof. Mm -hmm. And they shall take and they shall take all the instruments of ministry wherewith they minister in the sanctuary and put them in a cloth of blue and cover them with a covering of badger skins and shall put them on a bar. Mm -hmm. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth thereon. Mm -hmm. And they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh, the flesh hooks and the shovels and the basins, all the vessels of the altar, and they shall spread upon it a covering of badger skins and put and put to the staves of it. Mm -hmm. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary. Right, so when Aaron and his sons have made an end to covering the sanctuary, when they got wrapping the, every, done wrapping everything up, what happened? And all the vessels of the sanctuary as the camp is to set forward, after that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. Right, so now the sons of Kohath can come. But they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. Right? So everything has to be completely covered up. Mm -hmm. Then the sons of Korah can come, and they can take it, and they can pick it up. But if they touch anything, or if anything get uncovered, what's supposed to happen to them? They shall die. Stop jumping, Ezri. That's the order that the Most High God set forth. So now, even though they're of the Korathites, and the sons of Aaron are of the Korathites too, the Korathites can't do what the sons of Aaron do. Right? That's how particular the order is. Watch this. We have to appreciate this order. These things are the burden of the court of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. When it's the book say burden, think of burden as responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the responsibility of the Kohathites. <clears throat> and to the office of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest pertains the oil for the light and the sweet incense and the daily meat offering and the anointing oil and the oversight of all the tabernacle mm -hmm. and of all that therein is in the sanctuary and in the vessels thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of the Kohathites from among the Levites, but thus do unto them, that they may live and not die. When they approach unto the most holy things, Aaron and his son shall go in and appoint them, every one to his service and to his burden. Mm -hmm. But they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. All right, so they couldn't even look. They had to wait until the Aaron, sons of Aaron get done, then they tell them, the sons of Aaron, they can't even move. Listen, the Kohathites can't even, Kohathites know what they're supposed to be doing, right? They know exactly what they got to do. If the, if the sons of Aaron come out and be like, all right, everything covered, and they just keep walking, and the Kohathites be like, all right, thanks, and they walk in there, they get put to death. The sons of Aaron got to say everything covered, and then say, you. You go over there and do that. You, you go over there and do that. And that's the only way it works. It has to be particular in order. You can't just jump in there and just start walking in there just because I tell you it's done. No, the books say, read it again. Books say, I got to appoint you to do it. 
But thus do unto them that they may live and not die. When they approach unto the most holy things, Aaron and his son shall go in and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden. Mm -hmm. But they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And the sons of the, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Gershom throughout the houses of their families by their families. From 30 years old and upward unto 50 years old shall you number them. All that enter into the... In, and to perform the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the con congregation. Mm -hmm. This is the service of the families of the Gershonites to serve and for burdens. Your 20-year retirement plan right there. Mm -hmm. And they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tabernacle of the congregation is covering, and the covering of the badger skins that is above it, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle to the congregation, mm -hmm. and the hanging of the court, and the hanging for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle, mm -hmm. and by the altar round about. Mm -hmm and their cords, and all their instruments, and their service, and all that is made for them, so shall they serve. Mm -hmm. And at the appointment of Aaron and his son shall be the service of the sons of the Gershonites. So now the Gershonites, can they just jump up and start taking stuff apart? Mm -hmm. Who got to tell them first? The priest. The priest got to be like, hey, oh, you. You go jump over there. Okay, now you can move. You just jump up and like, all right, man, it's time to take this up, man. We got to get this party going. Moses said, we got to leave 20 minutes ago. Y'all taking too long. I'm just going to start taking this part out. Guess what? Well, I throw a rock at your darn head right now. You sit your darn butt down. <laughs> it's important that we know the order. If you don't, listen, we think that we about to walk into a situation that's as lax as we're dealing with now. And we're not. People got to have an opportunity to know the God that they choosing to serve. You can't be walking and thinking you walking into a situation where, oh, God is just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Uh. You mess around, meet the man, and be like, man, this ain't what I signed up for. What I want to do is make sure that everybody got an opportunity to be like, oh, no, this is what I want. Or, nah, that's too much for me. So you can make a valid decision. You can know exactly what you're trying to do as opposed to guessing. The information is here. Ain't no, we ain't got no reason to guess. Let's know what we're getting into. Now, if you want to get into it, great. And if you don't, then that's fine, too, for you. Right? Keep going. Let's see. I ain't twisting. Nobody arm believe no book. That's crazy. That don't make sense to me. That thing ain't there. You believe it or you not. My job is to teach it, though. You got questions, I got you. All right, keep going. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershom in the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And their charge shall be under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Okay. As for the sons of Merari, you shall number them as their, and their, after their families by the house of their fathers. Mm -hmm. Thirty years old and upward, even to fifty years old, shall you number them. Everyone that enters into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay. And this is the charge of their burden. According to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation, the boards of the tabernacle, mm -hmm. and the bars thereof, the pillars, the sockets, and the pillars of the court round about, their sockets, and their pins, and their cords, with all their instruments, and with all their service, by name you shall reckon the instruments of the charge of their burden. Mm -hmm. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, according to all their service. In the tabernacle of the congregation, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Aaron, chief of the congregation, numbered the sons of Kohathites after their families, after their house of their fathers. Thirty years old and upwards to fifty years old, everyone that enters into the service for the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. And those that were numbered of them by their families were 2,750. Now These, you notice this number is lower than the number that we saw before. Because before they counted what group of people? What was the age range? One month old and up. One month of us, all the babies got counted. Now, they're counting only the people that's in between the ages of what? 30 and 50. 30 and 50, right? So between those two ages, now, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, you can get this count, so you'll see the number drop significantly. That's when you can serve. All right? Let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 5. Numbers chapter 5. Let's see what the book said. <laughs> And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper and everyone that has an issue and whosoever is defiled by the dead. But who, who remember when we talked about lepers? Right? Remember we talked about lepers maybe three, four weeks ago? 
We talked about how to identify leprosy. We talked about how the people was wearing a mask, right? We were looking like, oh, that's where they got COVID from, right? Remember COVID, you had to, you had to lock away for 14 days at first, right? Then they started just hypocriting, like, eh, well, 10 days, eh, well, five days. Eh, just when you feel okay, just go back to work. You know what I'm saying? Even lying folk. I don't know what's wrong with these people, right? But we look at it, originally it was 14 days, right? Well, they got that from our law. Our law says that if you had a sign of leprosy, you get locked away for how long? 14 days. Seven days. Seven days. Then they'll check you. Then you then check. Seven days. And even if you good, guess what? Another seven days. Another seven days. Right? And as a leper, once you a leper, when you walk around and you got declared leprosy, you had to wear a covering over your top lip. That's a mask. Right? So that's what they got this stuff from. So that was leprosy. The law in Leviticus taught us how to identify it. So now that we know how to identify mm. it, now it's time to put the law into effect. So now he commanded us to separate all the people that had leprosy. He taught us how to identify it, how to deal with it. Now you identify them and you separate them, right? Keep going. Watch this. Whosoever is defiled by the dead, both male and female shall you put out outside the camp, shall you put them, that they defile not their camps in the midst whereof I dwell. All right. So now let's look at the camp, right? Let me uh, make this if I'm going to be. So if we look at the camp, this is the camp. Right? Oh, well, y'all can't even see it, huh? So this is the camp. Let me put the little red thing. You can put a little fancy red thing on here, I think. Let me see if I can put the little red thing on there. Let me do the laser pen. There we go. Ooh. So look, this is the camp, right? This is the outside of the camp right here where the red thing is. So what happens is you can't be inside of your tribe or your groups or your camp. You had to go outside of that, right? because you had leprosy. So you would go way on the outskirts. Now we look at it on this picture and it's like, oh, that's not a big deal. Remember, this is at least a million people. So this is huge space, like it's huge. Like you can't even see the end of it. So you had to walk super far away, right? So far away, outside of the camp, and then you had to set up on the outskirts because you had leprosy or because you was unclean or because of whatever it is. That's how the Most High God had to set up. Let's keep going. And the children of Israel did so and put them outside the camp. As the Lord spake unto Moses, so did the children of Israel. Uh-huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit to do a trespass against Yahuwah, mm -hmm. and that person be guilty. Then shall they confess their sin which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, mm -hmm. and add it unto the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he has trespassed. Mm -hmm. But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord, even the priest, mm -hmm. beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. And every offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his. Mm -hmm. And every man's hallowed thing shall be his. Whatsoever any man gives the priest, it shall be his. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, if any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass, so hold it right him. there. So we're gonna pick up on this part next week, right? This is gonna talk about the law of jealousy, right? Now this, I tried not to tie anything to Yahushua so far. You know what I'm saying? But this we gotta break down because a lot of people don't touch it. A lot of people don't even know what we're about to read is in the book, right? So we're gonna break this down starting next week, and then uh, we're gonna go a little in depth into this and talk about the law of jealousy, what it represents what it actually is, and then what it represents in terms of prophecy as well. All right? I forgot all about that, though. Then after that, we got to learn about the law of the Nazarite. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And we get into a couple other cool things. Any questions?